therapy. Drama therapy is when you're, you know, it's an intentional use of theater techniques and psychotherapy techniques, and you put them together in order to help people heal, express, uh, get to know themselves better, live in a community, you know. The prison project we did, I guess, like it got a lot of, you know, attention because it was a pioneer project in the Middle East, like in the Arab countries especially, because never had theater entered prisons before that or any drama therapeutic activity went there. So uh, I've started doing that in 2008 in, a, in the most notorious prison in Lebanon called Rumi prison and it's a big prison in Lebanon uh, it holds around 4,000 inmates for a prison that was built for 1,000 male inmates but I go and I knock the door of the prison administrations and I say hello uh, how about we do drama therapy and theater inside your prisons definitely uh, uh, it was a refusal so it was like do you see our prisons, how they are like, like you're coming with a luxurious idea of doing theater, you're crazy or something, you know. But I didn't give up, I really did all negotiations possible and it took me a year to get finally the clearance and set the project in there. I also have to mention that if I got encouraged to do projects in prison, it's because in 2002 I witnessed a great, great project of theater that's been done in a theater, in a prison, I mean, in Volterra in Italy. It's in Tuscany. It's an old fortress that has been transformed into a prison. And there's this guy, Armando Punzo, whom I respect a lot. He's been doing theater there for 25 years. So every year they produce a play. And the whole prison transforms into a big festival thing. And the whole village, you know, the city around the prison they have the festival also around it, so it's a theater festival with a play inside the prison and many plays in the different theaters around it. And people come from all over to the world to, you know, see what these inmates have to say. And the, the citizens in the village, you know, they encourage what's happening inside. So it created this whole community, like we don't deny the prison anymore. The prison is part of this city, you know. It's not like they are recluse behind their walls and we don't want to hear about them. No, we want to hear them and they want to see us and, you know, so which helps a lot when the inmates get to get out of prison one, one of these days when their sentences are done, they get to get jobs in the city. There are things you can observe in an inmate and you'll see him changing. I'm going to go from the superficial things, you know, the color of the skin, like when you're, when you're, you know, like now if I look at you it's like you know uh, there's some um, beautiful red color on your cheeks like I can feel you're alive you're you have some you know when you first enter a prison I'm talking about my experience when I first entered Rumi prison in 2008 these men with these black faces you know black really black with this how do you call here the the circles the black circles and these faces okay you know after two months of the intervention you'd start seeing some cheeks you know happening okay then there is a light in the eyes and you could tell that they are more alive and then the the way they were expressing whoa now they are listening to each other and they can find the words to what they feel because before you tell an inmate how do you feel this is not a word on a feeling you know it's like what let's put words on what you feel and this is something that is obvious for for example for you and me but for someone who didn't learn how to express all his life and is living somewhere where the feelings are suppressed, it's, it becomes really hard. These are the observations. However, what I did for 15 months, because this was the length of the first project, we did a longitudinal study, psychological study, and which was my uh, thesis for my master's in clinical psychology. So we, we, you know, administered these tests. It was three tests administered three times at the beginning of the project, in the middle and in the end. And there was this control group that didn't get the drama therapy intervention. So we did this whole comparison between people who got the drama therapy and people who didn't do the drama therapy. And the study just shows it there. These people who did the program, they had more hope. 
they had they felt they had another identity other than the criminal like I can be a human being like people could still see me as a human being they started thinking about the future with no criminal ideas there you know like establishing a family uh, finding a job having a kid you know they slept much better than the control group they didn't get insomnia at night they were eating better and they felt support from the group When I first entered prison, it was just, you know, to do the play, 12 Angry Lebanese, which is an adaptation of the 12 Angry Men, but really totally changed with many monologues from the men and a lot of songs also composed by them. So this is, it's a 12 Angry Lebanese play. I got the idea of bringing a camera inside. My idea wasn't to do a, a film. The idea was to archive what's been happening there, you know. I never knew if we'd stay there, with, I don't know, maybe the prison administration would come one day and say, oh, sorry, you have to stop your project because, because, you know. So I was always like, I need a witness and the witness that would stay there. The camera is a better witness, you know. So thank God there is my friend who's Jocelyn Abijabrayel and she's a DOP, director of photography, and she accepted to go along with us and she was there like really quite daily with me holding this camera. But really there was no film at that time. When the project finished, we said, okay, let's watch what we have. And we were watching, we said, whoa, there is a film material in there. And this is when we decided that we're gonna do the film. Why a film? I mean, a, a play, you'll get to watch it in the present moment, you know, it's great. And then you'll go out from prison and you'll definitely go tell your circle of friends, your family, and oh, I've seen these inmates and you know, they have the la 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 la. However, a film can travel much further than just the word of the pe persons who came and watched it. For example, 12 Angry Lebanese, and uh, really thank God, I mean, it was unexpected, but when the film finished, first of all, I sent it to the first festival, it was Dubai International Film Festival, and it won the first prize, which made it n travel in 67 countries. Since 2010 until now, the, w the film is still traveling. It has won eight awards. Every single Lebanese, like people interested in documentaries, have seen it. So, which means now the word is spread much more. People get to know the prisoners, whether they they got into the prison or not. Like to watch the play, you can be seated in your house and see these people, and they are alive, and these are live interviews with them. You know. Why prisoners? Great question. I mean, yeah, if any person would come, why prisoners? Why invest in prisoners? Let's invest in the environment and stopping wars around the world. You know, why prisoners? Well, guess what? A prisoner is a human being who could have been someone from your family. If we want to put them in prisons, and that's it, and one day they'll go out, what do we expect? Are they turning into better human beings? No. Like prisons alone, just punishment is not a solution. So if you want him to come back or her to come back to society as a better person and someone who learned something from his past, then certain interventions should take place. And this is where my work, Johnny Stelling's work is, you know, to make them express, to make them have deeper insight, you know. Um, I want to say that I'm very happy that I've been invited here, really, a lot. I'm so thankful to Open Hearts, Open Minds. Uh, you know, when you believe in signs that as if God sends them to you, like why did I receive at this moment in time this email from Johnny Stanning saying, would you like to come and why me at this point in time, you know, I'm on a vacation because August I don't work in Lebanon. And I was like, of course I'll come. So yeah, I'll come. And I didn't know you guys and you didn't know me and we got to meet. And it's so great to connect, really so great. And I hope it's just the beginning for a longer path with each other. Hope to see you all in Lebanon to visit our own prisons this time and show your work and talk with our inmates. Thank you loads.